Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to, on behalf of Nigerian teachers, welcome you to this uh, evening's meeting. Uh, I'm Dr. Peter Ogudoro. I'm the leader of Nigerian teachers community. Uh, for those of you who are new to our platform, Nigerian teachers community is um, a community of practice, a professional community of teachers, educators, educational researchers, uh, predominantly from Nigeria, but many of us are also people who have joined the community from around the world. There's hardly any country that is not represented in our community. As of today, we have about half a million, and um, we have been around since 2016, when the community was founded. And I have had the privilege uh, to have uh, provided leadership uh, since that time. And last year, we won the Facebook Community Accelerator Award as a result of the vibrant and highly engaging nature of the work we do on our platform. Nigerian teachers community is a place where you can nourish yourself intellectually if you're a teacher. If you have questions regarding the subject you teach, uh, the leadership of your school, or even your subordinates, peers, and bosses, in terms of how you relate with them, the policies of your school, everything that is challenging, you have every opportunity and right to post questions on our platform. And it doesn't take more than about 30 seconds and somebody will come in to provide you an answer. And all of that comes to you for free. And we are doing that because we think it's our responsibility as professional teachers to help ourselves. Uh, because if we have to wait for government to give us opportunity for continuous professional development, we may wait forever, especially in the developing world where politicians are yet to understand that education indeed is the bedrock of development. And until you get it right with respect to education, it doesn't matter what efforts you're making with respect to trying to kickstart your economy or improve your politics or uh, solve social uh, cultural problems, you are not going to make, make a significant progress. Uh, the advanced societies have achieved quite a lot in this area. And uh, I know that one of the reasons why they have remained ahead of us in Africa is the fact that they prioritize education. And until African countries and governments um, recognize the need to prioritize education and start their development effort from funding education, training the teachers to run modern classrooms, and of course, for those who teach in the higher education uh, uh, sector, providing them the resources they need to do cutting edge research and helping them to get involved in international networks that will enable them to continue to grow, develop, and of course, share ideas with their colleagues around the world. Until that begins to happen, we'll continue to struggle as a continent. Uh, Africa, as we know today, boasts of about 1.4 billion people, and as um, a significant fraction of the world population, which today hasn't gone beyond 8 billion. So Africa accounts for over 15% of the world population, but unfortunately for us, we don't seem to even be able to account for up to 3% of the world wealth in the world. And that uh, issue of uh, not uh, catching up or competing effectively has a lot to do with the decrepit education system in most African countries. We are at the forefront of trying to correct that, and we are lucky. Facebook, uh, last year, uh, came in to recognize the work we're doing. And uh, in collaboration with our platform, they made it possible for me to visit Finland to go and have a look at what they do in their teacher training institutes. I was at um, the University of Helsinki, which is in the capital of Finland. And then I had the opportunity to move around uh, some schools, and uh, that gave me opportunity to see how they actually run their classrooms. Teachers in Finland have autonomy, and most of the Western world now are beginning to think seriously about the need to give teachers autonomy, because um, the current system we have in Nigeria, most African countries, is not working for all. There's so much emphasis on, on using lesson notes to drive the work we do in our classrooms, and we know that that has a way of limiting our capacity to recognize the individual needs of the children we work for, who are the major reasons why we are teachers, why we are in the classroom, and why we are in the education sector. There is this imposition from government institutions 
of, in the public service who insist on the way we must do our teaching. So we spend so much time drawing up lesson, lesson plans and lesson notes. At the end of the day, we are just insisting that children have to learn what we think they should learn rather than what they should learn to be globally competitive in today's world. And so we are working very hard as a community to, to, to change that. And this evening I have uh, with me uh, a crop of uh, Africans um, who are dons in, in diverse areas who are here uh, to help us to understand what you can do if you are getting very uh, disappointed in the way education is done in Africa and you want to uh, improve yourself, get all the skills you need and probably position yourself well to take full advantage of the opportunity the United Kingdom government uh, is about to unleash on uh, Nigeria and of course about um, eight other countries. And that opportunity uh, will begin to unfold in, in, in terms of details from next month, uh, last February. And as a community, we, want, we don't want our members to um, be struggling to understand what is about to happen. So we want to be able to provide you accurate information at a cost you can afford. So all of you this evening have had the privilege to join us for free. And we'll um, make this an ongoing event every Sunday at five o'clock. Uh, you have the opportunity to come in here and uh, get updates on how you can prepare yourself to take full advantage of the opportunity that United Kingdom government is giving teachers in Nigeria and some other parts of the world. But to start, I would like you to know that in the house, and you will hear from them very shortly, I have with me an associate professor of, of analytical and environmental chemistry who is currently uh, teaching at the University of Ibadan. Um, uh, and she'll be uh, having the opportunity to interact with you very shortly and you will understand why she has to be here. And that's Dr. Adebola Adi. Uh, I have also uh, had the privilege to have Dr. Benga Akintola, who is uh, a specialist in, uh, in business education. Join me from Olabisi Onabaju University in Ago Iwoye, in Ogun State. And um, he will be playing a very special role this evening. Those of you who haven't had the opportunity to, uh, or the resources to uh, obtain teacher's registration certificate from the uh, TRCN, and then uh, you have a great opportunity this evening to understand how you can obtain it without having to go through too much struggle. And of course, even if you have, you must have, you definitely have colleagues who are struggling to obtain that certification. So the information we provide you this evening will make it possible for you to know what to do to be able to get there. I also have with me um, uh, an erudite scholar who has written over 70 articles in his field. He comes from a background in physics and then has uh, today obtained a PhD in electrical engineering who teaches, he teaches at the University of Rwanda in Kigali. Uh, that's Dr. Godwin Ashemota. He has joined us all the way from Kenya where he is currently uh, living with his wife, you know, who also is a don, uh, uh, Dr. Um, Kemi Ashimota, who is a psychologist. So working with me this night, the four of us are here to provide you the information you need so that you don't uh, fall prey to charlatans who are likely to come your way and start telling you that they are consultants who will help you to get into the UK. We want to give you accurate information so that nobody defrauds you uh, out of um, the, the, you know, this, uh, uh, understanding we have now that Nigeria is so tough that nobody wants to stay here. So if you have to leave, you have to leave in a way that will not make you lose money in the process. So you don't move, as we will say in this part of the world, you don't move from frying pan to fire. So for a start, um, what uh, is the UK saying? The UK is saying that very soon they are going to allow teachers who have qualified in Nigeria, having the teacher's registration certificate, uh, given by TRCN to also be able to apply um, to uh, relevant uh, agencies in the UK to see if they can uh, merit uh, admission as people who are now recognized in the UK as teachers. That's what they mean by you know, a qualified teacher status. And uh, interestingly, we have to uh, 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 make it very clear this evening that giving you that status, uh, which you have to apply for and follow a rigorous process to get it, it's, it doesn't amount to giving you an offer for employment. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me questions. Does it mean that once they get that uh, qualified teacher status, they automatically have become teachers in the UK? The answer certainly is not likely to be in the affirmative. It's just like um, 
uh, when you become a chartered accountant. You know, if you go to university and study accountancy, it doesn't automatically make you a chartered accountant. It doesn't make you a professional accountant until you have joined the relevant professional bodies. In the case of Nigeria, for example, uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, Institute of, a chartered Institute of Transition. So if you uh, get have a degree in accountancy, for you to become recognized as an accountant, you have to join uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants and see so you have to write relevant exams. So uh, when you qualify as a chartered accountant, then you, you have authority to audit accounts and to uh, touch uh, sensitive matters that have to do with accountancy, but it doesn't mean that the mere fact that account has given you uh, a certification that that automatically becomes a job. You see, you see a responsibility to acquire the relevant skills and learn how to apply for jobs and develop the network that will enable you to interact with your colleagues who are there to assist you to get into the places where they are working and enjoying the jobs they are doing. So if you're a general accountant and you go for interview and you don't impress them, you still would not get a job as an accountant. So mere registration certificate doesn't prove that you have become uh, a teacher automatically, if, if, whether in Nigeria or in the United Kingdom. And it's more critical for the United Kingdom because it's a society that um, pays great attention to what happens in the education space because they recognize that it takes a sound education system, education system that is functional, effective, and um, appreciative of the value of young people to make a difference in the society, you know, to uh, be able to move society forward. And that is the kind of society you want to go into. And they don't joke with children. Uh, in, the, in the pecking order, uh, if you have to rank, rank people in society, I think children, from my experience, as um, a graduate of, 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 of a UK university, the, the, the children are above every, every other person in that society in terms of care, love, and protection. So if you're a teacher, you want to go to the UK to teach, you have to recognize that they have, aside from meeting conditions that have to do with having academic credentials and of course demonstrating that you have the skills, you must also have to go through a rigorous process of proving that you have you have no criminal records because they wouldn't want people to come into their education system and use the classroom to defraud um, parents or to, to abuse their children. And so only those who uh, meet all the criteria, uh, academic, technical, you know, uh, moral, and emotional intelligence can function effectively in the, in the UK education system. And having come this far in this um, in, uh, in initial introduction, I would like to emphasize that um, uh, the reason why we are doing this is because we believe that the Nigerian teacher deserves more than, 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 than you know, uh, government of Nigeria or in, uh, private sector employers are giving, are giving the Nigerian teacher at the moment. Uh, some teachers in this country are earning as low as uh, about $500 uh, in a whole year. Uh, in the UK, uh, if you are lucky to get in there, uh, you will, uh, for, for starters, be earning uh, an amount of money that will be the equivalent of probably up to 30 million naira in a year. So over a period of uh, 10 years, uh, if you manage your resources well, uh, you don't throw your money away. You would have earned as much as about you know, 300 million in, in, in if we convert all of that into naira. That's about 3.3 billion in only 10 years. A Nigerian teacher who remains here to teach certainly cannot dream of uh, getting even 1% of that amount of money, uh, probably in a whole you know, lifetime. And so we want to change that and give you the opportunity to um, acquire the skills you need to get into center, uh, a place where teachers are, are, are appreciated, recognized, and adequately rewarded. And then where you have opportunity to, to learn, continue to develop, and then probably you know, bring up your own children in that kind of sophisticated environment. I have been privileged to have trained in that environment I, I did my PhD um, at the University of Reading. They hosted my PhD research. University, University of Reading is, is, uh, is in England. It's 25 minutes away from London. That's where I did my PhD. I also had done a master's there at the, the uh, Institute of International Development and Applied Economies before I, I moved on to Institute of Education, where I did my PhD uh, in education with emphasis on career management. And that has prepared me for the kind of role I'm playing in the global education space at the moment, which um, uh, most governments around the world are, 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 say, uh, you know, are, are appreciating me for. And I thank God for the grace to be able to you know, uh, play this central role and to empower Nigerian teachers to uh, go out there and see that um, what you're not getting from here, you can get from elsewhere. So we are going to equip you with the knowledge, the skills, and of course, the values, the moral uh, uh, background, and the network that will continuously support you 
to remain uh, an effective teacher in the UK environment, if that is the environment we prefer to go and work in. And uh, uh, trust that we are not going to disappoint you along this way. But we want to make it very clear that you have to make an investment in terms of developing yourself to be able to um, respond well to the, in, to the questions that will come your way when you start applying to teach in the UK, uh, in the UK schools. Um, it, it's not just having a certificate that gives you the job. You must uh, be able to uh, respond appropriately to questions that uh, 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 prospective employers in the UK will ask you so that you don't disappoint yourself and disappoint your family when the opportunity, when, when the opportunity comes your way. And that's it. Uh, but the question is, what are the basic, basic things you need to know? Um, if you are going to work in the UK, uh, the UK will require you to speak English well. And the easiest way you can convince the United Kingdom you know, employer uh, in terms of a school wishing to bring you on board, that you can speak that English competently without them having to stress you uh, through interviews is to obtain uh, the IELTS, IELTS stands for International English Language Testing System, is a test that is conducted by British Council around the world uh, to give people opportunity to prove that they can speak English well, write it well, and also understand instructions given in English and also be able to uh, read uh, literature presented in English all the time. Because the children you are going to teach are children uh, uh, who have been brought up in an environment in England where English is the only language they have always used to interact. And so you will not only be able to write it well, you should also be able to speak it and pronounce the words in ways that they will be able to understand what you're saying so that there will be a common understanding of the vocabulary you're using. And uh, um, if you meet that condition, then um, we take it for granted that technically you're competent. So if you're going to teach chemistry, you know the basic things you need, you should be able to uh, interact with the children on regarding chemistry. If you're teaching physics, you should know physics inside out to be able to make your mark. And uh, having met those technical you know, uh, 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 qualifications uh, criteria, you also have to demonstrate that you have no criminal record because they are going to research on you uh, without you knowing how they're going to go about it. But they have the resources to be able to come into Nigeria and look at your profile, go to all the places that matter. Your former employers. So if you are in the habit of quarreling with employers, you go here today, you quarrel, you move to another place, that may not be very good for you. So you need to begin to demonstrate you know, emotional intelligence to accommodate some of the things you probably are not comfortable with just because you have to promote your career. Because no matter how hard we try, we will never find ourselves in an environment where everybody will do it exactly the way we want. So it's our responsibility to learn, to demonstrate you know, uh, emotional intelligence. I have seen some information making the rounds on the internet you know, saying it's very, it's very difficult to teach in UK schools. Yes, I, I can confirm that indeed is a demanding job, but it's not an impossible job. It is demanding and probably impossible for those who haven't got the skills. And because if you go into the UK without a reorientation, you know, moving into the UK with your cultural uh, background, you know, as, as an African who comes from a high distance society, high, you know, uh, 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 you know distance society uh, in, terms of, in terms of authority. Uh, it, it becomes a problematic because uh, teachers in Nigeria are used to uh, their children uh, 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 they, uh, and the children that they teach and the young people who are in their classrooms, whether it's a primary or nursery or secondary school or even in the university, you know, answering them, sa, 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 ma, 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 all the time. And then uh, the, the school leaders are used to everybody, you know, uh, uh, doubling for them, as they you would say, in the Western part of the country. That is not what you're going to find in the UK. Uh, you have to make up your mind to accept your students calling you by your first name all the time, not only sometimes. And you have to accept uh, a situation where um, significantly younger people who are uh, our colleagues um, who are also teachers will also be calling you by your name. They will call you John, not, not Brother John, not Uncle John, uh, sometimes not even Mr. John. Uh, they will call you John and you should be, you should be happy to accept that. And uh, they are recognizing that everybody has contribution to make, including children. So we are very autocratic in our teaching approach. We impose our ideas on, on, on the children we work with in classrooms because that's what the government has told us to do. When you relocate to the UK to teach or go to Finland or Norway or, or Sweden, in, in more sophisticated societies, you will discover that that is not how teaching is done anymore. Uh, the, the child is recognized as a very important resource 
in the classroom. And so it's your responsibility to recognize that you have to pay attention to what the child is saying all the time, not sometimes. You have to carry the child along uh, to be able to um, uh, understand the child's needs and tell her you're you training not strictly in line with your, your less, lesson notes, but more in line with the needs of the individual children in your classroom. And so if you are not you, you yet used to this system, then you have got to start thinking about how you can acquire the skills that will enable you to operate along these lines and you know, have a new orientation, a new way of looking at life. So if you modify the way you look at life, those of us who have had the privilege to study in the UK, I work there, I, I, I still go and come, I just returned from the UK, I still work for organizations in the UK. Uh, there's nothing impossible about working for UK organizations. It's just a matter of modifying the way you look at life because this whole idea of, um, you know, elders are always right. You're not going to find that in the UK. And they, they recognize that uh, any, 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 anybody, even the people who haven't gone to university probably may have the best ideas when, when we have problems to solve. And we have got to have an open mind to give everybody a chance, including children in classrooms, even those in kindergarten. And sometimes you discover um, just as some of us already know, that the phone you have is a very important resource. And sometimes your children are the ones who know how to, to, how to manipulate it for you to be able to get resources from the internet. So they want you to continue to think like this all the time, not sometimes, all the time, so that the child gets adequate opportunity to um, express um, uh, you know, his or her needs. And then you have to teach in line with those, in, in, with those needs. Uh, all the time, not sometimes. It's very important that you recognize it. So I'm, I'm, I'm making a deliberate emphasize all the time. So if you're able to uh, change your orientation and look at life from this fresh perspective, which is a much more interesting perspective, the idea that the teacher knows everything is, is, is anachronistic. It, it, there's no evidence that supports it. A lot of times, what makes you a teacher is the fact that yes, you're older, you have some knowledge and skills that other members of the classroom community do not have. But sometimes what you find is that uh, if you are willing to open your mind, uh, your, your students will definitely have a lot to teach you. In Finland, all the time, they emphasize the need for reflection and give children an opportunity to tell you what they know before you start telling them what you think they need to know. Because sometimes some of the things you are teaching them, they already know. So don't waste classroom time talking to children and telling them what they already you know, have a clear understanding of. So that's the kind of environment you are going into. Uh, on July, uh, sorry, on January 27, uh, it's going to be on a Friday, uh, starting from five o'clock. We will give you the opportunity to meet relevant, you know, um, agencies um, who will come to our platform, you know, via their representatives to come and explain to us how, in definite terms, you can apply successfully to get into the UK to 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 function as a teacher. So save that date, uh, Friday. January 27. It's going to be an international conference, a virtual one, so you can join us from anywhere in the world. But, but of course, um, uh, it will be a paid event, uh, but all the other conferences where events we're going to do prior to that time, you can attend for free. But that one is going to have you know, several speakers from around the world, from Finland, from the UK, from universities, and from uh, public you know, agencies and a, 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 a college of, of teaching in the UK, so that you will understand the definite terms how to make your application successfully. Don't let anybody come in and tell you he will make the applications for you. The person who wants to rip you off, you can do that application yourself because you're a teacher and if all, everything you need to know is written in English. So when you go to the, to the platform where this is going to you know, uh, 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 be opened up for you to, to assess, everything will be written in English. And if you are literate, you should be able to read it and fill the forms and get in there on your own, including your visa. You should access a visa uh, at the British High Commission without having to you know, go through an agent. As a teacher, I don't expect that to be wasting money, paying people for things we can do for ourselves. And we, start, we have to start training our children that way and the children will teach in our classrooms to learn how to fill forms on their own rather than our filling all the forms for them. That's how to begin to prepare them for the kind of community environment, global environment that we are going to take them to. And that's it. So, and then finally, uh, before I, I, I move on to bring in uh, the other resource persons who have joined me this evening, we have to let you know that apart from uh, meeting the English language requirements, not just by way of saying, I have always been speaking English, you have to prove it beyond the reasonable doubt. They may not insist on you are doing TOEFL or you are doing IELTS, but it's a competition, not up to 1% of people who will apply to take advantage of this opportunity we get in. So if you want to get in, you have to get more and more credentials that the average teacher will just sit down there and take it is, is a lottery. It's not a lottery. You have to get, um, you know, pass a certain level in terms of uh, meeting requirements for you to be given the chance to even uh, attend the interview. 
So the more is, um, credentials you acquire, the better for you. So I want you to start gathering those credentials now. When we meet next week, I will give you some specific ideas on how to um, assess resources uh, uh, that will make it easy for you to acquire uh, those credentials. But one major credential you need to have, which is not going to be a paper credential, is, is, is a credential that has to do with demonstration of your capacity to reason in quantitative terms, is for you to be able to handle simple arithmetic, you know, uh, be able to understand basic science, chemistry, biology, physics. If you have forgotten those things and you're aspiring to go to the UK, um, you, you, are, you are likely to struggle. And uh, we must also say that most of the people who are going to find it significantly easier to get into the UK via this platform are those who are in STEM, because the UK uh, education system is currently um, running at, at um, you know, at, at subpar in terms of the number of, you know, STEM teachers, science, you know, technology, uh, engineering, and, and mathematics teachers, especially mathematics. If you're a physics teacher, if you're, math, if you're a chemistry teacher, if you're a math teacher for the mathematics, you know, biology. Those subjects are in high demand in the UK, in the US, in Finland, in Norway, in Australia, in New Zealand. And so if um, you have studied any of those kind of courses, you are, you are, you are, you are in law. But those in the arts and social sciences also have a chance, but definitely for you to uh, get in, if you're coming from arts or social science background, you must really, uh, aspire to probably have um, significantly better credentials, not just stopping at first degree. If you can have a master's or have a PhD, that's, that's even you know, much better for you. And so this evening, I want to uh, bring in Dr. Adebola Adeyi, who is an associate you know, uh, a professor of, environment, of analytical and environmental chemistry at the University of Ibadan. And she is also a member of the Royal Society of Chemistry in England, uh, so, Dr. Day, um, can you come in and give us an idea? Uh, you are familiar with the UK environment, uh, just as you also teach chemistry as a don at the University of Ibadan in Nigeria. Why do you think um, UK schools and UK governments and uh, you know leaders uh, who run the education system there think that it is important that people should have basic understanding of chemistry? Why? Why is that relevant? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir, and thank you for having me. I want to say that um, chemistry recreates nature. Chemistry is life. Everything we do, everything around us revolve around chemistry and the provision of basic needs, food, clothing, shelters, and so on. And for sustainable development, chemistry play, plays a very key role because from the food we eat, we enjoy good life, energy, and so on and so forth. Everything is chemistry. And uh, my experience as a lecturer, I've been, I've been teaching chemistry for the past 20 years at the university level. And I can say categorically that most of my students are everywhere, both locally and internationally doing well. So we all need the basic knowledge of chemistry so that we don't take things for granted, even our environment. We need to understand basic chemistry to be able to teach, you know, display our knowledge in the UK if we want to be a teacher or a lecturer, as the case may be, in that kind of environment. I am a fellow of the Royal Society of Chemistry in the UK. And I can tell you that without chemistry, chemistry is so important in everything we do. And I'm very, very happy to also help the Nigerian teachers to acquire the basic knowledge needed to be able to access teaching job in the UK. Even I can say that Royal Society of Chemistry is also there to assist to a large extent uh, teachers in Nigeria, especially chemistry teachers and uh, probably those in sciences, because chemistry cuts across different aspects, different sectors, you know, different walks of life. So whatever you are doing, you might see something related even in chemistry as a member of the Real Society of Chemistry. And there are lots and lots of benefits an opportunity there is as a member. 
Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you, Madam uh, uh, Doctor um, Adi. That's 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 interesting. And of course, uh, having studied and worked in the UK, I know that what makes you function as a teacher, as a teacher, is not just the fact that you study political science and so you teach government. They want you to also, in some sense, be an all-rounder. And so if you don't understand basic chemistry, uh, the principles, uh, they would not be very comfortable allowing you to function in their system. Because it's very important that we overcome you know, superstition, which people who don't have science background, they have the tendency to indulge in. And so the way we look at life in Nigeria, where we think that you know, uh, we, we can't. You know, the, for example, it's a society where uh, most families have either cat or dog or, or both. The African Nigerian you know, is coming from a background where you know, cat is associated with witchcraft and things like that. So if you get into those societies, you have to recognize that you can't be behaving like that and think that children and their parents will be very happy with you. So science says that some of those ideas we have are not are not very, very acceptable. But let me uh, let us hear uh, from the one who uh, can uh, tell us a bit more about, about science. Um, we go to Rwanda, uh, where Dr. Godwin Asimota uh, Dr. Godwin Asimota, you hold a, a PhD in electrical engineering. You started from physics, so as a physicist and electrical engineer who has a PhD in the area, and you teach at the University of Rwanda in Kigali. Uh, can you give us an idea uh, as to why um, the, uh, Britain would be insisting that those who manage their, the, the classrooms where the children study are people who have basic understanding of science, including physics and probably mathematics? Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, physics is a um, study of natural physical phenomena. And um, everything ab about us is physics. Even we are physics. So without physics, you can hardly do anything. And if you look at it closely, um, we are talking, that is sound, that is physics. We, we, we use our mouths to chew food as a machine, that is physics. So all these are things we can relate with, which are very close and not too far. So physics is life. Technology, science brought together is life. And what we do impact us, impact our environment and impact others. So what happens is that whatever you do, we as human beings, we are composites. What we are using now, computers to talk with each other. In the olden days, if you want to talk to somebody abroad, you go and queue and pay for one week and go and queue for hours before you can talk to somebody else. But now you can just uh, tap your phone and you start speaking and the person gets you clearly. So the issue is when you talk about physics, is everything about you, around you, and things that are far off. So your mind should be open and not closed and not parochial. So the, even the, the British are very observant. They are very strict. Time is of the essence. And what they do, they task you all around. I remember when we go to secondary school, in the early 70s. We were 40 in a class. We did arithmetic, wrote essay, we read, and we sat opposite each other. In one hour, 30 minutes, they interviewed 40 candidates. And it was, you enter through one door and go out through the other. So if you are taught by the British, every part of you is used to teach you. You are taught like the chemist was talking about. If you want to see how you, 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 re, you remove um, um, hydrogen from water, get um, sodium under oil, cut it, which is soft, drop in the, in, in the water, it does, and it just flows. That gives you physics. It is clear. And you see the thermic reaction, effervescence. So everything is put down, and with that alone, you see and you don't forget for life. You don't need to cram anything to be able to describe what you saw. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent. Uh, so the, the, your last you know, comment you know, caused my, uh, my attention to the fact that 
the teaching we do in Africa most of the time has to do with um, uh, getting the children to copy notes and uh, dictating these things for them to put in their in their notes. Sometimes the teacher comes in and gives you know a, a, le a lesson prepared to the cl class captain, and the class captain does the job, stands in front of the class and dictates it for his or her mates to copy. And um, but the comment you just made says, no, um, the, the British and most of the advanced you know world now are saying that the children have to experience what you're telling them. They shouldn't just cram it, that's road learning. It doesn't work. And that's why you know, so many scientists in Africa are not actually making a huge difference. But if you are taught science in the advanced societies and you are a scientist, you'll be able to solve the problems you know, that, that, are, that, that, uh, that are, are, are afflicting society. Uh, before I let you go, um, Dr. Asemota, can you tell me, uh, people like you are in Africa. Uh, but um, somehow Africa is uh, globally known as a dark continent, not in terms of the color of our skin, but, uh, but more in terms of the fact that electricity is a big challenge. Nigeria is a country that would need, need probably up to 200 um, is it megawatts of electricity, uh, but we don't seem to have been to be producing up to, up to 5,000 on a consistent basis. What's, 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 what's our challenge? Why are we struggling with providing our people electricity in the 21st century when we know that without it, we can't kickstart um, development? Um, there are many factors which um, are difficult to, to describe. They are header headed, but the issue is it depends on how we want to go. Um, I read in one of the things that came through your um, platform that um, about 7.8 million people are on metered. That means they don't have meter. So the, the uh, PACM people come in and give them any bid that they like. So that is not what we should do. What we do is have metered people. Metered people, as you meter the people, they pay according to what they have. Um, so when, once they pay, then they, are, they, are, they receive their power. Then it makes it easier to service people who pay and you don't um, overburden people who don't pay. So most of the power is either stolen or is um, diverted, other things happen. So there was a um, meeting uh, prototype that was done in the Korea, some other places in the 1900s, okay, 98, 2000, but it didn't work because people don't want it to happen. That's all, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ashimota. It's interesting to hear that people don't, don't want it to happen. Uh, in other words, uh, you're reminding us of uh, our long you know, uh, history in terms of corruption. Uh, so uh, there are people who are in the public space to, make, uh, to, to promote development, but they have become the obstacles you know, to development. Anyway, um, interestingly, the advanced societies believe that uh, if you have to solve problems, you start from the education system. So we probably need a new crop of politicians. And the best way to achieve that is through our education system, which is what the UK is, is working on now. Uh, as we know, UK is in the top you know, 10, in, 10 countries in the world in terms of the strength of the economy. And uh, they do not want to lose their position. And that's why they are looking for the best brains from around the world to come and uh, join their school system to teach their children so that they will remain globally competitive. They do not want to lose their position in the committee of nations. And if Nigeria is serious, it's the same thing we have to do. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm particularly interested in this, I have had the privilege to, you know, to go and train in Europe, in diverse countries, Norway, Sweden, uh, Finland, uh, Austria, et cetera. And then primarily United, United Kingdom where I, I did my PhD. Uh, uh, which was so there by University of Reading. I was also at Cambridge University and several other places. I know that um, those people there are, are fantastic. Um, it doesn't matter what you want to say about them. Africans have a way of arguing that, ah, they colonize us. And <laughs> that's the reason why we are where we are. But they are no longer here. We have a right to get up and you know, claim our, our positions. They are not stopping us from, for example, having this conversation this evening. They are not stopping us from running our classroom. They are not stopping us from teaching our classroom, our children what they should know. So we have a duty, uh, for example, to enthrone 
um, you know, center politicians uh, in a political space so that they can give us good governance that will make sure that teachers are empowered to do their jobs, pay teachers well, give them the laboratories they need to be able to train children effectively. And of course, um, train them and give them continuous you know, development opportunity for them to remain uh, technically sound and uh, let them mingle with their colleagues from around the world all the time so that they do not lose uh, the opportunities that come from, from, you know, from time to time, scholarship opportunities, seminar opportunities, fellowship opportunities. And by the way, our community um, is very well positioned now because we have international collaborators um, who are assisting us to bring uh, scholarships to Nigerian teachers who are bringing uh, fellowships to Nigerian teachers who are also bringing uh, distance learning programs to those who may not be able to travel. So UK universities are coming to Nigeria via this arrangement you are working at now so that those who, are, who haven't got the skills they need can stay in Nigeria uh, within about a year or two, um, secure uh, UK recognized you know, credentials and at the cost they can afford. All those are possibilities. And those who are already qualified will give you all the ideas you need to be able to approach the right employers and then train you on how to respond to questions uh, when uh, you have to meet uh, uh, the panel of in interviewers and to be able to convince them that you can function in, in those kinds of classrooms. Uh, in subsequent meetings, we'll give you uh, more info information regarding how that, 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 that will happen. Um, I'm hoping that uh, Dr. Akintola will be able to get back here if uh, technology in Africa permits him, but it does look like from Agri, where it's difficult for him to get good internet access, which is one of the challenges bedeviling the education system. Um, university lecturers and the classroom, you know, teachers at primary uh, and secondary school levels don't seem to have good uh, quality uh, access to internet and other technologies to be able to do their jobs well. When you get to the UK, that will no longer be uh, be a problem. Uh, you have internet access 24-7. Your yeah, yeah, laboratories will be adequately equipped. And so uh, for today, uh, take note that um, uh, we will uh, give you the opportunity on a continuous basis. It's not something that will begin and end on February 1. Some of you will get in this year into the UK, some will get in next year, some will get in in two years' time, some will get in three years' time. So let us not be fooled into thinking that everybody who doesn't get in uh, on the 1st of February is not going to get a chance to get there because most people actually will not be ready because most people who are excited about what is coming don't really understand the full you know, gist of it. And that's why we are going to have a conference on July, on, sorry, on January 27, which will be on a Friday. It will be in the evening so that you would have gone to school and come back and uh, we'll be able to help you to understand what, what you, are, you, are, you should look forward to. So Dr. Benga Akentola, can you help us? Those who don't yet, have the TRCN um, certificate, what will they do to get it? How will they go about it? What, what does it mean in the first place and how can they get, get, get there? Thanks so much, sir. I'm sorry for that um, uh, break in um, connection. Well, as you rightly said, is one of the technological challenges we have in Nigeria. Okay, straight to, um, the assignment I was given, I'll be given information about TRCN, which is the regulatory body. Okay, so uh, it does look like uh, Dr. Uh, Akintola is having a significant challenge. Um, the university where he teaches is, uh, is far away from Lagos, Abuja, and Portacourt, where most of the uh, telecom and data provision companies have invested enormously to ensure that people have good quality access. So it's not his fault. It's the fault of uh, um, all of us uh, who haven't made the right effort to put the right you know, technology in place to help ourselves. So we are going to make sure that um, this, uh, so what we'll do is to, um, Dr. Akentola has sent um, the right uh, document that is comprehensive. So we'll put it on our website and I will share it on the uh, WhatsApp platforms that people have joined. Uh, if you are not on um, uh, the WhatsApp platform for the UK you know, migration uh, uh, program, uh, join, join the platforms. I will share that this evening. Um, I will give you further information this evening and then by tomorrow, our IT people will put the document for you to easily access 
uh, the test uh, uh, platforms for to, for you to get uh, TRCN on our on our website. I'll put it on our website so that you can add, download it for free. And those things are not supposed to cost you money. And then if you need assistance in terms of how to prepare for the test, uh, Dr. Uh, Akentola, along with some other people in that in the various uh, locations across the country, uh, can work out a way of, of helping you to, to helping you to, to get what you want. So on that note, we want you to know that uh, to continue to get information that you need, um, please make sure that you have um, signed up as a premium member of Nigerian teachers. Um, uh, the conference we have on, on January 27, which will bring in our uh, 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 partners from the UK and relevant rep the representatives or relevant agencies and institutions in the UK, uh, it will be a paid event. Uh, but our members who are premium members of Nigerian teachers community uh, are not going to struggle to, to, to get in, uh, to, you know, to be able to uh, uh, access that, that conference. And so they, to make it very easy for anyone who wants to travel to, to be able to travel and, um, and get there in good time and enjoy the UK. I, I, I encourage you to go, uh, but look back after you have gone and you have acquired superior skills and you have earned money, look back to your family, back home in Nigeria and your friends and even the school where you're currently teaching and assist them you know, uh, by way of knowledge and even money to improve the quality of their own life. Don't succeed alone. And uh, it's on that note that I will finally encourage you to connect with me. I'm Dr. Peter Ogudro, the leader of Nigerian Teachers Community, uh, to join me on, on, on LinkedIn, um, simple, uh, linkedin.com uh, .com slash in slash Peter Ogudro, and you're there. And of course, um, uh, our community on Facebook, you can join for free. Uh, Nigerian Teachers uh, uh, is, 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 is a Facebook you know, a, a platform uh, where we have about half a million teachers from around the world discussing challenges in the education sector for free and sharing ideas that uh, uplift teachers and put more money in their pockets. Those who are doing side hustle, they're able to know how to do it well. Those who haven't started, we give them ideas for free on how to improve the welfare of, of, of their children and the rest members of their families. And of course, um, every other problem you, you are, you are, that confronts you, including challenges you have with your uh, school leaders and school owners, if you just mention the, those things to us, it doesn't take more than uh, a minute for us to come in and provide you answers. And all of that you can get on facebook.com slash groups slash Nigerian teachers. It's as simple as that. I think um, you can see it on the platform. And of course, if you like to have a chat with me uh, in the evenings. That's when I'm available to take calls uh, between uh, 7 and 9 p.m. on a typical day, including even on Sundays. Uh, you can you can you can put a call through to me. Uh, I think that telephone number has uh, been uh, flashed in the chat in the chat box. You know, 090 um, 6960 So connect with us in all these platforms and share this information you are getting with, with your with your colleagues. Don't keep this things to yourself so that your colleagues don't get ripped off. We want to emphasize again, uh, you don't need to pay anybody to be able to get into the UK because uh, everything that um, uh, you are going to fill as form will be written in English. And so uh, if you have the credentials, the only money you have to spend will be the money to train yourself and acquire the credentials. If you don't know physics at the level that UK needs it, you have to go and pay money somewhere to learn it in the university, at the technical college, or wherever you can get that knowledge. English language, IELTS for our members. We are working at an arrangement with experts, you know, who trained in the UK uh, with PhD in English language from that society, you know, to come and help our members to also prepare at the cost they can afford to get that credential so that it doesn't become uh, an obstacle to their getting into the UK to work. Um, we, we, we all deserve good life and we, it's, it's, it's at our doorstep now we can't, we can't afford, afford to miss it. So uh, please join us again uh, this time next week. It starts at five o'clock and um, uh, within an hour, uh, we'll provide you updates. Uh, next week, we'll be looking at a few other things that have to do with this event. But if you don't become a premium member of Nigerian teachers, it might uh, make it difficult for you to benefit from the conference that will uh, happen on January 27th. That's the, e the easiest and cheapest way to be able to access it. Yeah, but feel free to uh, bring your mates using the 
link to join the WhatsApp groups that we have shared. Uh, let them join the, those platforms. I will continue to uh, provide the information for free. On that note, uh, please remember, if you haven't done two-way authentication, uh, you need to do it to remain a member of any of the WhatsApp platforms that we have created so that 419ers don't hack into your account and use that to penetrate any place that we're on. The, our name is very important to us. We are highly uh, a highly reputable, you know, uh, reputed organization. Uh, we won the Facebook award uh, uh, for last year, uh, Community Accelerator Award, because of the kind of impact we're making around the world in the education space. And we don't want uh, any foreign nana to get into any space that, that, that we're running. So on that note, I wish you and your family well. I'm hoping to um, provide you updates via the channel, channel you're already used to. Uh, if you are not in one of those um, uh, uh, WhatsApp groups, uh, don't worry, I'll share the links again. And uh, if you have colleagues who need to get in, I will, I'll provide the links. Uh, don't worry about some of the groups that are full, we'll, we'll, we'll find alternative ways for you, for you to get there. On, on that note, um, uh, and in the absence of uh, uh, anything that we, we haven't touched for today, uh, let's see you again on, Saturday, on, on, on Sunday at 5 p.m. Have a great week ahead. Teach your students well and use your classroom to transform lives. Thank you.